Well, welcome to my daily teaching video. Coming to you live today from Lyon, France. Having a little coffee out here in uh, Place des Terreaux. Hey, in uh, my teaching videos this week, I'm going to be talking all about developing passion and motivation for the things of God. Now, be honest with me, at times, probably all of us have gone through seasons where we feel we lack passion, maybe we lack motivation concerning the things of God. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about how passion comes and how it goes, but how to maintain a life where we can stay at a consistent place a passion and motivation in our walk with God. This will really change your life if you put it into place. I'm going to talk about how to stay passionate about worship, how to become motivated and passionate about reading the Bible, about sharing your faith, about many aspects of the Christian life. Really important teaching. Come on this journey with me. I'm going to do four teachings on that this week and then a Q&A. So uh, good to have you here. Let me do a few quick housekeeping things as usual. Firstly, if you're watching this and you're not yet a Christian, man, I'd love to talk to you about Jesus. Drop me a line, uh, my email or contact details are on my website and I'd love to do a Zoom call with you, meet up in person or share Jesus with you. Secondly, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you to all of our partners. I have this incredible Holy Ghost bunch of people I call my ministry partners. The people who walk with us, who fellowship with us, who invite us, who support us financially, and most importantly, who pray and fellowship, who share in the koinonia of the gospel. And uh, I have partners all over the world, some for many years, some new ones, and we are believing God to grow that. Uh, if you're not yet a partner, I really encourage you to pray about becoming one. There'll be some details wherever you're watching this. And uh, lastly, I want to say thanks to all of the new subscribers to our YouTube channel as well. We are at uh, 728,000 subscribers and we're believing to go over 1 million by the end of this year. So thank you guys for that. Uh, lots of new things going on, but check out the links below. And lastly, do sign up for our email newsletter. I know that will bless you. Best way of keeping in touch with me. Boom. <clears throat> well, in today's video, we're going to jump into part two of this teaching on passion and motivation. What I want to do with you today is get you thinking about how does motivation actually really work in our life? How does motivation relate to action? And uh, I, I, in yesterday's lesson, began talking about how many, so many Christians run on duty, run on obligation. To a large degree, a lot of people have a relationship with God that goes like this, God, I know you want me to do this, or you want me not to do this. Do this, don't do this. Do this, don't do this. And then we look at our performance and we feel like a failure. We feel shame because of what we've done or what we have not done. And that often becomes like a self-repeating, replicating cycle where we feel shame because we're not living and walking in the way we know we should with the Lord. And what do we do? Well, it carries us all on that same realm. You know, maybe you're trying to lose weight. I know about this. And if you've eaten badly, after a while, it's like you can't even be bothered eating well. I've just eaten badly. What's the point? I'll just carry on. And so many live in that way regarding the things of God. And I don't believe that's how Jesus lived. There's a verse I quoted yesterday, Psalm 40 verse 8, that says, Oh Lord, I delight to do your will because your word is hidden in my heart. Your law is in my heart. And I want you to see that that's how Jesus lived. Jesus lived full and overflowing with the Word of God. And as a result of that, it was a delight for him to do God's will. Come on, just think with me for a moment. Imagine if you got up today and it was your greatest delight to read your Bible. You just couldn't wait to read your Bible. Imagine it was your greatest delight to worship your greatest delight to just sit there before the Lord, drinking Him in. Your greatest delight to show your faith with others. Now, most of us at, at a very, I think if we're honest, most of us at a real level on the inside of us think, yeah, it really is great to read the Bible. It really is great to worship. It really is great to be in God's presence, to fellowship with believers, to talk about the things of God. I know that's true. And yet, why don't we do it? And I want to suggest to you this passion and motivation is part of the deal. To a large degree, I want to suggest to you the problem is we're trying to do these things through duty and we try to do them by willpower. We try to
force our way through and we fail really easily. Let me give you a quick analogy that's helped me over the years. You know, I'm in Europe right now and uh, most European cars, uh, unlike the United States, are manual cars, what the Americans would call stick shifts. You know, would have a manual gearbox and a clutch uh, as well as an accelerator and a brake. And, um, you know, if you were to, uh, if you, if you were to go to a car and you couldn't start it, um, I were loaning a car, renting a car at the moment, my wife and I, and there's a hill where my home is. And the other day, my son went to the, the car we borrowed and he couldn't start it. He said, the key won't turn. And it was funny because I just suddenly realized he's never actually driven a European car before. And in America, in, they don't have a steering lock the way they do in Europe. So a steering wheel locks when you take the key out. And long story short. Here's the point though. When my son told me the car battery was dead and wouldn't start, I was like, no problem. We'll just roll it down the hill. I'll put the clutch in, put it into second gear, let the clutch out and start the engine that way. Now you can't do that obviously with an automatic car. Here's what I want you to see though. A starter motor, the electrical starter motor, I don't know that much about car mechanics, but I know this much. Every car has a battery and it would have a starter motor that takes that battery power, if you will, and ramps it up and gives it enough power to, to kickstart the engine. Now it takes a lot of force to kickstart an engine. And if you were to go into a, you go to your car and turn that engine over, you know, normally your engine, if the car is in a healthy mode, is gonna fire in the first one, two, three, four, five seconds. If you turn it over for about 30 seconds and it doesn't start, you've got a problem there. But what's gonna happen really quickly is you are gonna run that battery to nothing. Because that battery is able to move that engine, start it, it's not able to keep moving it. Now, back to my European example. If I were to sit outside here in a, this big square in Lyon, France, I'm in the second largest city in France today, put a car into first gear and simply turn that starter motor on, there's enough power in that battery to move that engine forward. That engine, the car will begin just purely by battery power to start moving forward. But I tell you something, it will die in about 10 or 20 seconds. It will drain the battery. Here's what I want you to see. The starter motor is really effective at starting the engine and the engine is really effective at moving the car for hundreds and hundreds of miles. But the starter motor won't move the car for 100 yards. Now, our willpower is like the starter motor. Our willpower is really great. If I get up and I'm just feeling lazy, I'm sitting in there drinking coffee, like, I don't want to read my Bible, I don't want to do whatever. My willpower can say, right boy, switch your phone off, open Bible, get a notepad and a pen, and let's just begin to read. I, I start doing the right things. And when I start doing the right things, my heart engages with those and passion for the things of God begin to come into my life. I delight to do your will why your word is hidden in my heart. If I'm not feeling like worship, I see this every Sunday in church. Some people come and it's literally like it's written on their faces. I'm not gonna worship. I don't feel like worshiping. I, I, I don't wanna worship. Let other people worship. I'm just, eh, I've had a tough week and I'm gonna sit here. Here's what, if those people will, as an act of their will say, hands raise, mouth sing how great is our God, begin to worship, the heart, like the engine, will, will, will propel them into the glories of God. So living a life based on willpower is a really terrible way of living life. Using your willpower to start to do the right things is a really, is a vital step. It's a starter step, it's the first step, but it only takes you so far, your heart has got to get into that. And what will happen quickly for all of us is if we will, with our will, engage to do the right things, our heart will get behind that and we will begin feeling the emotions, the passion, the motivation that comes when we are doing the right things. If every day you will, as an act of your will, choose to worship and worship the Lord, after a while you'll begin building this lifestyle of motivation and passion in worship and you'll begin enjoying it. And after a while you begin to associate worship or reading the word or whatever that may be with pleasure with passion with delight i delight to do your will now the problem for most of us is we associate some of these things with drudgery with duty 
we are so we tried to read our Bible through obligation through willpower we tried to read God's Word because we know we should because God will love me more if I do we tried to engage in the things of God purely on a duty basis and whenever anybody does anything by duty we tend to look at it like an obligation because it is an obligation we tend to look at it as something difficult something harsh something I really don't want to do now if I offered you today the choice of eating ice cream or painting a fence um, eating ice cream or changing the oil in your car eating ice cream or doing your taxes early most of you are going to go for the ice cream why we've learned over time that the second I put that in my mouth BAM I get a sugar high I get pleasure my, through my taste buds I get a sugar high it doesn't last long but it feels good notice that I believe God wants the things of the Spirit to feel good now that's not the reason we do them but I tell you he wants us to enjoy not endure walking with him so learn quick recap learn with your willpower to start doing the right things number two learn to engage your heart with them and you will begin to feel them but those feelings are like the tail the not the head they follow but they don't lead and thirdly and we're going to finish in part four of this series talking about this we build a lifestyle where we begin to associate the things of God with sheer and wondrous and glorious delight and ecstasy boom I'm going to be back tomorrow I'm going to be talking more about this and about the mind and the heart connection when it comes to motivation and passion for God thanks for watching guys do hit the subscribe button down there check out the links below Drop me a line or a comment. I would love to hear from you. Blessings in Jesus' name.